Welcome to the Expert Network Team podcast. Where our goal is to inform and educate our listeners on matters related to finance, legal, insurance, accounting, and other interests that are of personal and business nature. We hope you will find our content useful as well as entertaining. The Expert Network Team consists of Carl Frank of ANI Financial, Mike Miller of Miller and Associates CPAs, Jeff Cromendike of Security First Insurance Agency, and I'm Nathan Merrill. I'm an attorney at Goodspeed and Merrill. Together, our independent team combines our expertise to provide you insights and solutions, some straightforward, some profound, for real life opportunities we see on a daily basis. We hope you enjoy the information contained in today's podcast and find it useful. If you'd like to learn more or desire to meet with any of the Expert Network team members in person, you can contact us at info at expertnetworkteam.com. That's I-N-F-O at expertnetworkteam.com. We encourage you to take advantage of a free consultation with any of our team members. Just mention this podcast when you schedule your appointment. Now on to today's podcast. Welcome to the Expert Network Team Podcast. Today, uh, we have, I think, some interesting topics to discuss. Um, I'm Nathan Merrill of Goodspeed Merrill Attorneys at Law, and I'm here with Carl Frank of ANI Financial. Hey, Nate. Great to be here. Thanks. Um, and I, we're going to lean heavily on you today, Carl, because as we often do... Carrying uh, the burden. Well... Yes, and we just have so much to say. We have so much insight. We yeah. have so much, you know, just breadth of understanding. But um, as we often do, sometimes we have kind of planned generic topics. But today we're going to do something that is more relevant to the current state of affairs. Um, and so introducing kind of what we're going to talk about today is in recognition of uh, depending on where you go for, again, we, this harkens back to where you go for information, where you go for media, there's a lot of uh, chatter, a lot of noise out there about the state of the markets, the state of the economy. We had the inflation numbers come out today. We've already done a podcast on inflation, so you can go back and listen to that. Things are high, things are tenuous, things are un, unknown as to where they're going to lead. And as a consequence, I think folks begin to get a little jittery about um, how all these things will impact their financial position. And so included in that is um, a particular importance, I think, is their investment portfolio and whether the market is the right place for that. They begin to uh, engender, I think, distrust or skepticism of the market. Um, and And... That that may be manifest in a number of ways. It's just the general uneasiness, the which is usually manifest in, I can't sleep at night. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I'm sure you hear this all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. And the other way it might manifest is a general, like I said, distrust or skepticism of the system, thinking it's rigged, thinking there's no way that I'm gonna, you know, I, perhaps it might factor into the perspective of why it is you're investing. Are you investing to get rich or are you investing for a specific purpose with a specific target, with a specific portfolio construction? You know, how are you approaching the market might impact somewhat how you view um, view its, uh, its ability to deliver on your needs. And then probably second to this, we can, uh, the second half of our discussion today, talk about, well, if you have these feelings about the market, the stock market, investing, what are your alternatives? And do they actually solve the problem? Do they help you sleep better at night? Do they help give you a feeling of more control, more surety in where you position your financial assets? Boy, so with that, topic. I'm going to let you kind of segue us into the proper focus of our initial discussion here on the uneasiness and anxiousness and anxiety. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's just great to see you again, my friend. What a crazy time we're living in. This is nuts. Never a uh, loss of things to talk about, for sure. Seriously, right? And, yeah. And, and Ukraine being invaded on February 24th may have changed everything. And, and that world change that we could be living through right now could be way bigger than any expert network team podcast on any particular topic, but investments are dramatically affected because anything that's publicly traded moves fast. Mm -hmm. And so it moved really quickly 
right? I mean, the markets in the U.S. It's the efficient were, market theory, right? Is the idea that the the information is embedded in the market before you can have a chance to really react to it. Yeah, I love the efficient market theory. That's what they teach us in college, and and certainly. You know, there's so many players in a, in a big market, and, and they've all got information, and they're all going to act on it. And so as soon as information changes, the price moves. And in theory, with so many players and the risk spread out so many different ways, uh, it moves to the right price, right? right? And, and there are always times when that's wrong, and there's always um, opportunities to try and make more money than than you know than you think you possibly could otherwise but that's not even really the point in investing is it i mean i I don't think that us regular americans are sitting around thinking that we're going to try and make more money than some we're not the wolves on wall street yeah we're not we're not like day trading for the most part i hope not right and that, that gets to maybe maybe the fundamental thing to talk about first is um kind of a common understanding of maybe how you and most of your clients approach investing, like what's the purpose? What's the goal? What's the intent? Because you're not working the derivatives side of the equation, trying to get your clients, you know, 100x returns and... and and certainly not the yeah. theatrics of Hollywood surrounding wealth creation it's through so, the market. Yeah, how do your so clients? Misleading. How do you and your clients approach investing? Yeah, we start with who you are. I mean, it, you, you get real, and so we have a conversation about what's important to you. What are your goals and your values and your relationships? Who means the most to you, and how does money help you help them help yourself? And, and live a life of dignity and independence for all the years you have on earth, and then maybe have a few dollars left over to give to causes you're passionate about and people you love. And, and that's where the money's really made, right? The, the money's not made by trying to be smarter than anybody else on Wall Street. The money's not made by uh, making a short-term decision in hopes that it's going to have some sort of a magical long-term effect. Like playing the lottery. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, the, it, it's not even in the same realm, really. It, it's the same type of thing that, that got you to where you are, where you have a few investable assets, is using common sense and spending a little less than you bring in. And, and then what do you do with that extra savings? And where do you invest it? And how long are you investing for? And so that's the, that's the real conversation, right? And so that's the approach we take. We start with that discovery meeting. And then from there, we build a, fu- a financial plan. And then the investments always pay homage to your financial plan. The plan doesn't pay homage to the investments. It's not that we're going to suddenly make you rich and turn a million dollars into $10 million or a hundred million dollars. Right. And then your financial plan changes. It's, this is my financial plan. This is how much I need to retire off, or this is how much I want to have an in income for the rest of my life, or this is the amount of money I plan on spending. And then in the future, because of inflation, like you mentioned, it's going to be more than today. So we can do that complicated math and help you get a realistic number and a realistic plan, put it together and achieve some goals along the way. That's the math side of it. Sure. So going back to uh, since you brought up the Ukraine thing and just all the the, some people call it chaos. I call it commotion. Um, Boy, it's a loud commotion, though, isn't it? Yeah, I well, wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't put amplified by chaos. the number of twenty-four hour news channels we have. But yeah, it chaos. is. It is loud, mm-hmm. um, and and again, based on who you listen to, uh, including the president of the United States, they've all acknowledged it's going to have some impact on on the way we live our lives, at least in the near term. Oh, I think so, it will. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. So now, now I'm that client of yours who has gone through this years ago, the proper portfolio construction, and I call you up, Carl, and I say, Carl, I I just, I'm, I'm watching, I'm sitting here, I'm retired, I'm watching the news because I got nothing else to do, and it's scaring the living snot out of me. Uh, I, I can't sleep at night. What Hell. do we do? Yeah. Well, we visit, right? We talk, and we look at your plan, and did the plan change, and are we, did we take into account, you know, momentary decline, and 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 look at the past and look at the history and then and then look at the future and what the odds are of success. One of the things I think we've talked about here in the podcast, in fact I know we have now that you look back at it, are the retirement guardrails. And so what we do at our firm to make sure that you're safe in life is to uh, get those assets in the in the right way and turn them into income. A and I assets and income, right? The the origin of our company name. And then grow it by an inflation rate. And so you're going to have a great year for returns, and maybe your income goes up. 
if you have a really awful year in the stock market and and it would be an outside normal event that would actually have to to cause you to decline or reduce your income in the future years, you'll know how much your income would have to decline. So you're in a safe range. You've got guardrails around what that looks like. And every year you revisit that and make sure you're still within the guardrails and go on about your life. And that's how you can turn a variable asset pool that's subject to things like Ukraine into a steady income that you can live off. And it's a great tool. It's a, you know, the, the math behind it, the academic research behind it, the, the, the people up and down the row here, um, you know, they, they do a great job of making sure that the guardrails are real and actionable for, for our clients. But likely, if you're that client who came into the office and said, Carl, I'm really scared. Like, this seems different. I'm probably going to sit there and say, yeah, it does seem different. <laughs> right? It, Validation goes a long way. Yeah. It, well, and it's the truth. I mean, this is a big deal. And, and it could be bigger than we think. But it was also a really big deal last year when COVID came back again. And it was also a really big year a few years ago when COVID first started. And it was also a big deal. You might get the hint, right, in 2008. It was also a big deal when the dot-com crashed, right? It was also a big deal when Russia defaulted in the 90s. And China. And, and yeah, and China. It, China is a huge story. China is a huge, huge story, and and there's so much to talk about on China that we should just do a podcast on that. In fact, we're doing a um, – I'll, I'll include in the show notes a link to an interview we're doing in our office with uh, a China expert, and it'll be, it'll be a video, but it would also make a great podcast. Maybe we'll put that on the expert network team. Awesome. So so one of the, the, the solutions to the – I'm anxious about the market. I'm anxious about where this is going to be is really to revisit the total plan construction and do an evaluation as to whether you're still within those guardrails. Oh, absolutely. Right. Right. That's the real the math. The real math is turning these assets into income, right? The real math is, is this something that you can live with and can you live off? So now I'm going to take the, 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 move down the spectrum a bit to what I forecast in our lead in, which is now take that same individual who's uneasy about the way the market is looking. They've developed some cynicism over the past couple of years, being concerned that, you know, the, the commoner, the average person, the average investor is being left behind um, or that the system is rigged. What, how do you address those folks' concerns? Well, usually it's going to be a series of questions in response to figure out why and what is going on and why they think that way. And, and you know, I don't want to make up reasons for anybody who might be sitting here, and I don't want to pass judgment on anybody who's sitting here. But a lot of times, you know, that podcast that we did on where you get your news is part of the problem, right? It depends on who you're listening to and who you're trusting. And you can... Um, very easily expand your thinking and thinking that all things are like that. The you know the the rigged conspiracy theories and, and the things that are are very um, common today, and not just in the U.S. As I read and learn, uh, uh, they're common all around the world today. I think are ways to simplify the complex. I think that the world is just so complex right now that we're prone to simplifying. And and sometimes when we simplify one thing and it works. We just expand that same thinking and apply it to everything. And it's impossible to rig the market. It's way too big. And, and it's impossible to not think that it is rigged sometimes when you listen to other things that are, that also seem too big and complex to be um, jury rigged. And you learn how people are manipulating things that you don't think can be manipulated. And so that's a conversation that we have. And we try to figure out why. And then we try to figure out what difference does it make. Right? What are your choices? Do you have choices, and and what would those look like? So yeah. So then I'll be the uh, I'll we'll keep going down this this path, this spectrum of of inquiry that a client might present is okay. So uh, I'm uneasy about the market. I think the system is rigged. This buddy of mine who I golf with said, <laughs> fill in the blank. And so the blanks. Right. I'm just going to run through the blanks with you. Yeah. Great. Buy gold. Mm. Yeah, great. I love it. Or so, silver well, or whatever. Yeah, and, and gold is the most emotional investment you could make. So you can't eat it. You are depending upon somebody else valuing it more than you value it now. And and it's no more valuable than what anybody else says it is. It's all about emotion, right? It's only usable to the extent that somebody else feels more inclined to pay more for it than you got it for. There's no... Um, 
practical use. Other than ornamental. Um, or Well, I mean, maybe in some mechanical level, the things. The gold connectors on yeah, your, yeah, you know. Th- right, right <laughs> like, like what we're looking at here right. uh, at our electronic devices here in the, in the studio. Right, I mean, that's. that's Rush a, Limbaugh's microphone. Apparently that was gold, right? Yeah, yeah you know, I've heard of that. I mean, you know, I think that the big deal is that any time you look at anything, any sort of um, in-depth way, you're going to find, and you peel back that onion, and maybe mm-hmm. at the core, it's not as solid as you once thought it was, that it really is a matter of trust. Well, it gets to the the, the theory behind it, or at least I think one of the draws of gold is the idea is the government can't replicate it ad nauseum like they can a dollar. Yeah. So it's pre- it's it's presented or it's perceived to be a store of value that is inflation. Yeah. Right. Neutral or well, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a really interesting concept to figure out whether it really is um, well, inflation and, and friendly or not. So to the first point, it, it's not necessarily not subject to manipulation. You can a, a brief study of history goes back and you can see how the silver market's been manipulated, the gold market in. In a number of cases. Yeah, famously. Yeah, so... Yeah, famously. I mean, I don't think anything is, um, you know, immune from um, any sort of short-term mistake in price, right? The efficient market hypothesis works until it doesn't... And it doesn't mis- make mistakes for very long. Well, usually. the government set the price of gold for a while, didn't oh, it? Oh, it was great. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the gold standard was, right. was part of it. But, you know, this debate about gold standard is really, really fascinating. I'm reading a book... Um, uh, by a big proponent of the gold standard named James Grant. And um, James writes the interest rate um, uh, observer. A- anyway, it's about 100 years ago. And it's um, uh, it's about the U.S. And, and we'd just gone through an election that was highly contested and, and considered rigged. And one of the candidates, this is McKinley, um, said that uh, he wanted the gold standard. Right? And so here we are, we're having this debate 100 years later that we've had 100 years ago, and, and it would have been 100 years before that that would have been very similar, and we would have had Alexander Hamilton saying, you know, we just need to take on a whole bunch of debt mm-hmm. here in America right. and, and pay off all of the, and you know this story as well as anybody, I know you're one of the best constitutional scholars I've ever known. So it's the same story, right? Surprise. In, in a different <laughs> way. Which, which may go a long way to settling some of that anxiety, too. It's like, well, we've been here before, Don't right? But, but th- that's a... Totally separate it, issue. It's not the same, but it rhymes, right? right? It, it's just That's so good. familiar, right? <laughs> it, I've, heard, I've heard that somewhere else <laughs> recently, and it, like it, it, not only history. Anyway, it doesn't repeat, but it rhymes, right? I mean, it, you know, it's a cliche, but it's true, and it and there's so much to understanding and putting things into perspective, and so sometimes taking two steps back and and doing that goes a long, long ways, and I think that what. Um, is really disturbing, perhaps, maybe, about the Ukraine situation may actually be very liberating for a lot of Americans. And so uh, I'll just dive into that, and it's a little bit related to investments because um, one of the things that all of us who are alive today um, have spent most of our lives, it would be 70 years now, possibly 80 years, uh, since the end of World War II. And during that period of time, America has ascended to the top by far the most uh, amazing country in the history of the world, the most powerful, the most dominant, and the world's police force. And uh, it's often misunderstood, and a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, we should be withdrawing from that role in the world, and we have over the past few years, and we're continuing to do so now, even in the face of Ukraine. Um, it's not our soldiers on the ground there. This is definitely war that may presage... Regional a- conflict. It's not World War Three yet. Yeah, and hopefully it won't be. Right. Right. And, it, and and this could presage what future wars start to look like, where we're the outside influence in these as opposed to being the police force that's right in the thick of it. Right. This isn't Kosovo in the 90s. This isn't um, Afghanistan as recently as a year ago or the past 20 years. So so think this through. This is in, in a very deep, possibly disturbing and possibly liberating way. Uh, a good diversification tool for your investment portfolio because as we disconnect, the world becomes more scary on one side and becomes less correlated, less moving in the same way, less dependent upon our police force to make Would you globalization say work. Deglobalization? That's exactly what's happening. And, okay. it, and it, many people are arguing and it's been happening for a while. And it is going to vary by industry. There are absolutely going to be ways that some of the high-tech firms are decoupling from China already and moving back into other parts of of Asia Mm -hmm. and other parts of the world and bringing back into the U.S. Some of the semiconductors are famous right now because it's Or just the Americas generally. I mean, just being being isolated in America 
has gone a long way. America North South, yeah, has gone a long way outside of the Venezuela phenomenon to exactly preserving supply chains, preserving. Oh, I mean, just when you think about it, it goes back to the Monroe Doctrine, which is the Western Hemisphere is off limits. I love it, and, so. and yeah, and, and I think it's like um, you and I playing a game of Risk, right? If you're if you and I are playing a game of Risk, and and we start the game, and I have any army in North America, by luck, uh, I'm going to try and take over North America. Like, it is the most well, powerful. I'm going to beat continent. you at Risk. Man. I have a better <laughs> strategy than that. First, you go after. Well, that's right. This is Australia this is first. Ah, Australia okay. first, because you only have one point. Because there's only one point of entry. Right, right, right. You don't have to defend three like you do. In South America okay. second, which only has two points of entry, and then you go for. And North then you go America. for North America. Yes, yes, right. I love it. So, it so we're going to take a pause here, Carl. Now that we've discussed our uh, acumen at Risk, the best strategies for d- world domination. And <laughs> that, that'll that handle our discussion on this topic for this week. And next week, we'll come back with more alternatives to market investing and evaluate with your insight as to whether those type of things will solve those problems of anxiety, cynicism, and uh, other um, issues that present themselves in the modern marketplace. Nate, I've enjoyed our time together. Uh, create a beautiful week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed the information we shared. If you enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to share it with someone else and join us next time. If you want to meet with a member of the team, please contact us at info at expertnetworkteam.com. That's info at expertnetworkteam.com. If you have special topics you'd like to hear about, please reach out to us and let us know at the same email address. Again, that's info at expertnetworkteam.com. Thank you for joining us and have a great day. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We want to remind you that listening to this podcast does not establish a client professional relationship with any of the firms represented, nor does it constitute legal investment or accounting advice. And the views are those of the professionals only. Investment advisory services may be provided through A&I Financial Services, and securities may be provided through Genios Wealth Management.